Welcome to Pull My Focus, adventures in the business and technical world of video filmmaking. Today, I'll show you how to take stock footage and make it more exciting in your video projects. All right, let's cut to the chase. The only thing you have to do to make stock footage look better is add audio. All right, we're going for take two. There are going to be times when you need a gorgeous shot of a landmark location, or a dynamic shot of a jet plane on the runway, or maybe a high-tech office location shot. Now, you can rent tons of lenses and lights and buy some airline tickets and go shoot it yourself, or you can turn to stock footage. For some people, the idea of using stock footage makes them cringe. They're probably thinking about old scratchy film reels used in high school presentations about industry and business. Forget that stuff. While you can buy old footage, stock footage libraries on the web are full of beautiful, crisp images and videos and even available in 4K. Also remember, one important thing is that once you buy it, it's yours. It's yours to use any way you want in your productions. And you should treat it just like it came off of your own camera, which means don't just slap some stock footage on your timeline and call it a day. It should go under the same process and workflow as all your raw footage. So color matching, color grading, and enhancements still apply. Now, what if you're tasked with using only stock footage to create a video for a client? This comes up sometimes with our clients. One client in particular had us create an opening video for a keynote presentation. We had to create a four minute video using voiceover talent, a few After Effects shots, and 95% stock footage. I'm not joking. So Frank worked with the client to come up with the script for the voiceover talent. And then we pulled together all the stock footage we needed. Here are some ideas that we came up with and we want to share them with you guys now. Color matching, color grading. Like I mentioned before, just because the video wasn't shot by you, don't just assume that it'll work with the story you're trying to tell. Match the stock video to either your shots or to other shots in the stock footage library if you don't need to shoot anything else. And then do some color grading or add a LUT to make it all feel cohesive. Sync cuts to music. If your video has a music bed, try syncing the stock to the music, just like you would for your own footage. And make it interesting too. Don't just match to the downbeats like everyone else does. Try cutting to different instruments. I mean, try cutting to the kick drum or the snare drum or the marimba. Maybe not the marimba. Alter speeds. Here's a good one. Try manipulating the time in the footage to make boring shots a little more exciting. For example, if you have a shot of a person walking from one location to another, try ramping up the speed of their walk and then back to normal when they reach their destination. It's a great way to keep the pace up. And you can also do this in the opposite direction and ramp the speed down. Many stock footage libraries offer their footage shot in at least 60 frames per second to allow you to speed up and slow down and still keep the video smooth. Jump cut. The first time I really noticed the jump cut technique was back in 2005 watching episodes of Ask a Ninja. Since then, jump cutting to the exact same shot became the norm with most every vlogger on YouTube using the technique to speed up the pace of their videos. I would call it MTV style, but then again, I'm an older guy, right? There's no reason that you shouldn't use the same technique with stock footage. If we take the same shot of that woman walking from one place to another and perform a series of jump cuts to it, it makes it seem a little more dynamic. It's another great way of keeping the pace up and keeping the viewer interested. Multi-shot compositions, AKA the Brady Bunch effect. Now I know there's another name for this one, but I choose to call it the Brady Bunch effect because once again, old. Take similar footage and composite it in your editor to make it visually interesting. Make a collage. It's a great way to convey a busy office environment or yummy food or whatever. Usually you can do this right in your editor with no need to go into After Effects or similar programs. Digital push and pulls. Sometimes a static shot of say the Statue of Liberty can work quite well. But try doing a digital push or pull with that same shot to see if it works a little better. 
Granted, a digital move is not the same as a practical move. Since the digital move is only a 2D image and we lose all that parallax yummy movement. But used in moderation, it could look quite nice. Match moves. Keep moves across different videos consistent. This means if you have some footage that pans left to right, try continuing that movement with the next shot if you can. If you have two moving shots that go in opposite directions, try flipping one of them, provided it doesn't have any words or distinguishing marks that'll give it away. By the way, all of the stock footage, and I mean all of it, that we used in this video, we purchased with our own money from Pond5.com. Pond5 is not a sponsor of this video in any way. We just love their collection, their user interface, and their customer service. What stock footage sites do you use? Let us know in the comments. These techniques work with making boring stock footage more vibrant and exciting. And guess what? They all apply to your own footage. The main idea is to think of the video that you buy as your own. Just like you went out with your Red Epic, flew to Italy, mounted it to that drone you have, and shot a fly-through of the Grand Canal. Or that. That's all I got about making stock footage look more exciting. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel to get weekly updates. See you in the next one.